Good morning guys and welcome back to a brand new video. On today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys something that um, it's taken me a while to actually learn. I mean, it has taken me a while to learn. It's actually been something that I've just become better over time with and time management as well doing it. And I'm gonna give you guys a little uh, tricks and tips on how to actually do it as well. I hope this uh, video helps you guys. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, don't forget to always go ham on that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Hit that bell button to notify you every single time we release brand new videos. And it's so easy now because we release brand new videos every single freaking day. So on today's video, I'm gonna actually teach you guys how to remove a background on images. Even if you don't have a professional studio, even if you just put it on white, like white background, paper drops or whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to teach you guys a way that I personally do it to make things look good and make it more presentable because I noticed that whiting out backgrounds or even changing it to a different color solid background makes the product look much better. Let's get to this video. Let's start this video. So pretty much I'm just going to go to my files, um, pick a photo that I, I took at our professional photo shoot. So these are actually taken in the warehouse with our white background. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? But as you can see at the bottom here, it's kind of gray. So the tool you want to use is the magic wand tool, that one there. So usually the shortcut key is W. As you guys can see at the top, my tolerance is at 100. So tolerance is at 100, this is what will happen. It will outline everything, like the background, but it doesn't cut it as perfect as you want it. So you can guys can see that it goes into the top, it's pretty good sometimes, but like when the more finer areas like hair and has a lot of pixels and stuff like that, I wouldn't do that. So I would move the tolerance down to about 10. And as you guys can see already, it's marking it much better and just tracing a better line. And if I hit the delete, do the white fill, you guys can see right there, it's perfect. It's nearly 100% perfect. You can't really tell that it needs to be touched up or anything like that. So usually... um. The lower the tolerance, the better it is. So you guys can see now that it's picking up all the little pixels in between, like the bits and pieces. It's, it's a very easy thing to do. You just gotta be sure to understand where your tolerance level is. And, um, and then you can just manually use the eraser tool and delete all the other random bits. But there is a little trick that I like to do to fix up hair because a lot of people, when people edit hair, it just looks very uh, sharp and pointy. So I usually get the eraser tool, as you guys can see when me zooming up, and I change the uh, opacity to really low. So I'm talking like 10% or sometimes even like 15 to 20% and I just slowly start chipping away. Not too much though, just so you can slightly see the the back shadow over of it and you take away the bits and pieces. I'm just gonna do it really, really rough just for a demonstration of this uh, video. So I'm doing voiceovers and me watching this is really awkward because I actually don't remember what I did. But this is hair and I'm deleting hair. I deleted away too much there, still deleted away too much, but it's a quick tutorial so you guys sort of can understand. But when you zoom out, it looks really good. That's the only thing that really matters. All right, enough with this photo, let's pick another photo. So I did the same pretty much thing. If you guys can see the tolerance is at 20 uh, and I'm just deleting all the white background and the gray bit as well. You just press delete, it'll automatically come up with that fill box and you can literally just fill it in with whatever you like. You can do a color, you can do white. White is usually the easiest, but another thing I do recommend is using a, uh, a transparent background. So sooner or later down the track, you can actually do whatever. So I'm gonna show you guys here. So I do have a template for my products. Uh, it's usually a 640 by 640 dimension. So a perfect Instagram size. It's a one by one. You can do 1080 by whatever. Just do a one by one sort of style. Um, as you guys can see here, the backgrounds are really light gray. You can't really tell it's gray, but it is gray. I'm trying to show you guys right here that that's a white box and you can tell that's gray. So the reason why I do a very light gray is so you can hide some of your bad editing behind it and it still doesn't look like it's a bad photo. So uh, let me quickly just duplicate this layer, bring it across to my template. And usually I take photos at like a gazillion uh, freaking megapixels so you guys can tell how big it is. 
and I'm resizing. Look at me go. Look how fast I'm going. Pew, 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 pew. Delete background. Delete background. Yep. Magic wand. I'm always using that magic wand tool, guys. So that's that should be your best friend. Um, during this video as well, I'm going to show you how Philly does it because me and Philly do it two different ways. I feel like a more advanced way of doing it and Philly has a real basic sort of way to do it, but um, it's just proving that it's easy to do. And I'm just going to show you guys the website real quick. So this is a website that you guys are not going to be able to see. It's not live at the moment, but I'm changing all the images. So you guys see the white background and the gray background. So I did them all already. And it makes the website have this really nice, clean, high-end feel with the white background. If I did the white on white background and I just felt like it wasn't good. All right, you guys just saw me do a professional photo shoot one, but I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to do a white background. So this is a white table that we've got. Philly's gonna show you guys how easy it is. Cause I can do it, then you guys can do it. <laughs> because it was very daunting for Philly first to do it, even though it was something that like, it was like a pro thing to do, but it's very simple. So even with Philly's phone, so she has an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Mm -hmm. But okay. you don't need it like this new iPhone. I used to use a 10 and then I used to use a 7 and a 6 before that. So any phone, but this is obviously a good quality camera. And what I like to do, I like to be right above it. The lighting's honestly not that great right now, but just for the purpose of this photo. Actually, wait, hold up. I'm going to just completely ruin this. Wait, I'm going to choose the Jigglypuff. This That's one. definitely not a This is not a Jigglypuff, but I'm going to choose this guy. Alright, I got a photo. So you guys can see on camera, this is what it looks like. There's like back, back shadow, there's like dirt on the table and stuff like that. Let's see how Philly will edit this photo so it is white. Alright, so this is super simple. I've just dragged my photo into Photoshop. I'm going to make it a square shape. And guys, I have only recently started to use Photoshop. I'm definitely a new... Wait, sorry. I completely ruined that. I'm just going to do this for now. I can always adjust the size later on. The and, first... Ooh. And if you guys actually need to know what sizing to do for Instagram, always do 640 by 640, which is a perfect square and it's a high resolution. Is that what you do, babe? 640 by 640? Uh, this is actually 1080 by 1080, which is really Yeah, so it's even higher. Yes, that's even higher. So the better the quality is... Oh, honey, just poured you, babe. <laughs> the better the quality is, the better it is. Anyways, the first thing that I always do, and you have to right click and you have to press rasterize the layer. I honestly don't know what this fully does, but it just means you can edit it, I think. That's what I've kind of learned from that. Is that correct? I don't, I don't even do that. I press E and then I... Yeah. Oh, okay. So both have different things. Now I'm going to go on the left hand side and press this little magic wand tool where there's little sparkles on the side. And pretty much you just click on it. Because my photo actually is not that great and bright, it's a little bit messy, but you can always change the tolerance up here to 10, 10 to 20. And if I click on it again, it actually does a little bit more. So I'm going to change it to 30 and see what this does. That does quite a bit. So that's going to be okay for now. Why don't you do this? Why don't you go to image, adjust, brightness, and brighten it up? I mean, could do that. And then change the contrast, remove the shadows, Press W. He's just schooling me right now. Oh, I thought you wanted to know how I do it. Oh, wow. There we go. W. What does W do? And it's pretty much done. And you just got to clean it up there. Okay, so I just, just learned something new. <laughs> All right. See, and but then to make it more square. As you guys can see, I'm doing this very, very quickly. Like, if you wanted to spend five minutes or so doing it. But also as well, even if you don't have Photoshop, I know this is going to sound bad and how it's going to be like, what the heck? Don't say, say Canva. This? If you say Canva, I'm going to no. definitely like, don't well, use the app. I Canva. would say, look on your iPhone or your Samsung and look at the app store. There's actually so many like editing apps that you can use. Even there's Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom that you can get for free, I'm pretty sure. Correct. And um, yeah, it's really, really good. I like to use the one called Snapseed. So it brightens up your photo really well, but it doesn't make you super overexposed. It just does it in a nice way. 
that's like my number one app to use when I'm editing a photo other than ViscoCam because they have bomb ass filters. <laughs> and if you guys want to do like a little drop shadow, as you guys can see that I'm doing it, I don't know why Philly has it on this. But what you should do is change the opacity down so it looks like a natural shadow. And you can change the angle as well. Because a lot of people who do edit uh, photos like this, they don't do a natural shadow. And it looks weird. Like sometimes it yeah. looks weird. Because you can tell that the, the photo's not uh, flat. So that means it has to have some sort of shadow. Never done it. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. See, so, so you guys can see that uh, Philly's able to do it herself. And it's not that hard. Like, people really think it's hard, but it's not. Um, Philly Lynn had to do it by herself. Um, I, I didn't really teach her much of it. I did give her the ins and outs of Photoshop. But you don't have to be a freaking genius to learn how to do Photoshop. But I do have to admit, I, if you've never used Photoshop before, you're not good with this stuff, which is what I was. It is quite daunting just looking at all of the things because you don't know what it means. But once you just get around to it and you start using it more, you definitely get used to it. And another thing, if you need to learn something as simple as that, just go onto Google, go onto YouTube as well. Watch this video. It just helps. It's so easy. There's all these steps and all of that. I'm going to show you some other little tips and tricks now on how we take product photos that are not flat lays like that. And it's actually so simple. Let's go. This is literally a brand new product that no one has seen as of yet. So it's just the backpack right here. I'm gonna show you guys, even with all the writing on the back, how I take some quick photos and how I will edit it. As you guys can see, the background's really like dirty, everything. I'm gonna move this out of the way, up this here. And then I'll take some photos. I'll show you guys how I edit it. And it's very simple. So you guys just saw me take the photos of the backpack um it's i'll show you guys how it looks like when i uh edit it it's gonna be very simple i'll screen record and talk to you guys so you guys understand what i'm doing and sometimes it's just like it's, it's a bunch of a headache stuff but i like to skip through things i don't want it to be a full in-depth video um i'm just currently picking the photos that i want to use so like let's drag this photo straight in you guys can see it's just a very close-up photo of the lanyard, the backpack, the, sort of the, the details, the finer details to it. So usually what I would like to do is auto-tone it, contrast, color, no, let's not do color because it made it kind of bluish, brighten it up just a bit. Sweet. The magic one tool, unlock the uh, layer as well just in case. Magic one tool, bam, delete. I'm editing this in a different way. If you guys are wondering what is the, the squares on the back, it's actually um, transparent. So I like to edit stuff also in transparent so you guys, so you can actually use it on other things. So I have a, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where are you buddy? This would be the smartest way to do it. A template for my products. So what I'll do is grab that, duplicate the layer, and pop it on the template. As you guys can see, the photo is huge just because of the resolution that I usually take photos in. And let's zoom in, see what it looks like. This is slightly annoying because the photo that I did take is not the shape that I want. So I'll crop it in like that so you guys can see the bag. So I'll save it, bag one. Oh, there's something ready. Let's do backpack. Next on the list, let's keep going through. This one here shows the water bottle inside. You guys can see, see all that dirty like uh, whiteboard drawings that I have in the back. Sort of just center it where I want it. Same thing, just do the magic one tool. Press delete. That's it. And it looks really good. Like, next one. More of an up top shot.
this shot here doesn't this shot actually looks disgusting right but I want to show how the product comes and this is where the one won't work on white as you guys can see when I wand around here it's taking everything so what you could do so you will have problems like this so I really want to show that it comes in a really nice dust bag it's I, I didn't cheap out on it uh, this is gonna be one of my see you can't you can just do this right but it's gonna look really ugly like what what the hell is going on there so let's undo that sometimes I like manually going in with the lasso tool tool here but on this one and then literally hand going around this is the where it comes becomes time consuming because it is a white product uh, it's hard to actually get things correct okay so this is a trick you see this yep select inverse delete zoom out done delete that delete that now I can just do the one tool oh 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 my tolerance was too high Still too, go back lower. And now let's give it a bit of a shadow. So when you do a shadow like this, you can tell that there's parts of your, of your actual product that's not edited correctly. So you can just go in and really, oh, that's too big. Delete it. That's pretty much it. That's the last photo that I need to do. I'll just literally upload it to my website and it should be all good. So if you guys enjoy this video, I feel like this is the more informative stuff that you guys would like to see in our videos. And it's stuff that like, I don't feel like I'm showing you guys anything that you can't just Google. I'm just showing you the way that I personally do it and how easy it is for me. And you guys don't need to stress out when you guys do it. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget if this video was informative to you, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button and share this video with your friends. I appreciate you guys so freaking much. Let's get back to work because you know how I like to do it every single day. You gotta hustle.